Hello everyone, today we have a very exciting guest in this live uh, video here, it's Hadir Shalabi. She is the Managing Director at Talabat and she's an overall inspirational woman and was actually named as one of the people to watch in the Middle East, one of the women to watch in the Middle East. Um, so I'm super excited to have her here, she's going to join in a few seconds, but we're going to be discussing about women in leadership, the role that education plays in this leadership world, how can women um, climb this leadership ladder and like she herself is an amazing founder of a company. Um, she worked for, her company was bought by um, Karim. She's now the managing director of Talabat and she's, many of you might relate, she's also an ex is hacker. So I see Hadid joined here. Let me accept her request. There you go. Hello, Hadid. Let me see if I did it correctly. There she is. Hi, Hadid. So hello, nice hello. You. Thank hey, you so Elsa. much for joining this live. I know it's always very busy um, having to manage with Hadid. Her schedule is insanely busy, but <laughs> listen, we managed, and this is one of my proudest moments right here. So Don't make me look for... bad, Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, thank you so much for joining. It's such a pleasure. Like so many people requested, so many people in our team requested that we had a live with you to discuss something. And, and we even have questions that they want answered um, because we all admire you so much uh, yeah, at Educately and as women. And also in Egypt, I know that you're one of the people to watch uh, in Egypt and the Middle East. So we have you here first. It's um, my pleasure, Olai. Thank you so much for the very nice words. And I'm the one that admire your team. I love the energy you guys have in the office. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, congratulations on the amazing partnership deal with Cristiano Ronaldo with Talabat. Thank you. Thank you. Just you just announced that. That's outstanding. Yeah, it's very exciting, actually. Yeah, that's, that's an amazing partnership right there. That would be, well, incredible. So congrats on that. Um, how's life? What are you doing right now? Tell us a little more about yourself. For the, for the well, I, I am uh, I'm, I'm in our office. We just moved offices uh, yesterday. So nice. You can see, I mean, Ooh. not so much to see now, but... Uh, much yeah. more fancy than our current office in the Greek campus. No, well, no. much, much fancier than <laughs> ours as well. So it took us uh, 20 years to be here. So. There you go. So it takes, <laughs> there's, it's a journey. <laughs> Yeah, it is indeed. I, I'm actually now more, much more excited to come to work. It's so interesting to see the impact an office can have on you. Like mm -hmm. in the, just moving to, to this new office, everyone feels much more energetic. Everyone is staying in the office till late. Like, I, I think I, I, I kind of underestimated the impact a new office would have, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Having a good environment to work and to like be most of your day in is so essential right whether that's for working or even like for studying right like right now there's so many students around the world that have to study in their bedroom like that's that's not the ideal situation so anyways I, it's always, I remember doing it's always that good a for a change things, yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> studying late at night in bed like just figuring things out at 1 a.m but anyway that's why not that's not why we have <laughs> you here like I really 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 and many people I think relate in this want to know about your journey as a founder of a startup um, some years ago, was it like, how, how many years ago do you create Taxi Al Sahel? It was 2014. So eight years Amazing. ago. Wow. So now I feel old, ago, Elsa. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now is not the purpose of this question. <laughs> but like, how was that experience like founding a startup as a young Egyptian entrepreneur and then selling it to one of the biggest companies in the world? Uh, I mean, it, it, how does it feel? That's, that's an interesting question. It feels like a lot of things. Um, I think the, the main feeling was excitement. Uh, excitement when it was happening and when you see results and when you see growth, but also excitement when I just tell the story and remember how it was. Um, I think the most exciting thing is when you see a problem and a challenge and you actually manage to fix it and you see the impact mm -hmm. on the customers or the people that you know that are surrounding you that every day are using your service. I, I think that's very exciting. Yes, I can imagine. Like uh, the moment that you that you heard, and especially having built this from scratch, right? It has to be an amazing satisfaction moment. But of course, like there's, I'm sure that it came with a lot of challenges. I'm not sure if if gender being one of them. 
Um, can you explain a little more about like what kind of challenges you faced as a young founder, female founder in Egypt and, and how did people like take you and how did you manage around that? Yeah. Um, I, I usually say that I'm not sure if the challenges were because I'm a woman or because I'm young uh, or I was young at that point in time. Uh, I think it's probably, a combination of both can't help. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. I think it, I think it was a co combination of both. Um, did I lose you, Elsa? No, for me, I hear you. Everyone else hears? Okay, I think I see yeah. you, but just the, the, let's jump out. For me, it's good. It's good? Okay, because I can't yeah, see yeah. you, but I hope everyone else okay. uh, can see you. Uh, and thank you for everyone that's writing comments, by the way. <laughs> It's nice to see some uh, familiar faces there. Um, so yeah, so yeah, there, there were some challenges, of course. I think the, the challenge is mainly in the first impression, right? When someone sees you and they see that you're a girl and you're very young. Yeah, at that point, when I started Taxi Sehel, I was just 23 years old or 24 wow. at some point. Um, so, so the first impression is usually you feel there's a lack of trust uh, in the beginning, yeah. a lot of questioning if that's actually going to work out. Um, but then I believe that you control the second impression, right? So you need to, uh, unfortunately, that's how it is as a woman or as a young person, that you need to prove yourself already in the first impression and make, make people trust you or have some sort of a, of a belief that you are the right person to, to go to the next step. And that's your responsibility. Because eventually, each one, like, you, you will be judged anyways, right? Yes. At least most of us will be judged. You're either yeah. too young or too, uh, I don't know, um, or from a or different old, religion, or from a different country, <laughs> or you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. So if we all say that that's the, like, depend that that is a limitation, then we will not go anywhere. So I choose now, at this age, to not care what other people think just because I'm a woman, you know? So I'm sure some people would have a problem with that. But if I take it into consideration, that it, then it will decrease from my confidence. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and that's such a good point. Like, there's always going to be people that find problems in anything, right? In literally anything that uh, that you're going to do in your life, that you're going to create, that you're going to launch. Yeah. There's always going to be people. But, in but honestly, I think I also have one advice that I, someone told me, uh, a lady actually from the parliament told me that when I first started my career. And I still remember that until that day. She said, Hadir, being a female is a pro. It's not a con. It's a great thing. Because think about it. When you get into a room, actually men want to speak to you, right? And it's not super, <laughs> uh, super weird if you go and you network in a room, in an event. You're not a creep if you go and do that. But mm. versus if you're a guy, sometimes it's actually harder for you to do that. So if anything, it's a good thing to be a woman. And if you think about it, even just now in March, how women are being celebrated, you okay. actually feel lucky to be a woman. So if anything, it's not just that I'm saying it's not a challenge, but I'm actually saying sometimes it's a great thing to have. It's a you great see it thing as an opportunity. And that's a great mentality exactly. change, seeing this challenge that people see as an opportunity for actually entering more places in some way but of course like even yeah you're very young 23 years old right creating this but you've had an international experience was Isaac before that or was it after yeah Isaac 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 was before right yeah yeah so like right having this before. international experience really helped you in this journey of like having also the inner confidence what, what do you think the international experience that you had with Isaac uh, yeah. did to this in a, Isaac for sure was a game changer. I don't know if everyone on the live knows what, uh, what Isaac is, uh, but basically it's an organization that helps build leaders into the society through doing exchange. Um, so at a very young age, you're giving the ability to lead a team. So when I was 19, I had the ability to lead a team of seven people. And then each year that number of people was increasing and increasing until you join a team where you can potentially lead teams across countries who or what organization would ever give you that kind of responsibility at a young age? So joining extracurricular curricular activities as a young person in university helps you so much. So when you get into the world of working, whether in your own startup or in another corporate, you already have an experience that no one else at your age has. So I would say the leadership part, which is something that usually takes years to learn, if you spend those years learning it when you're in university or right after graduating, it makes a huge difference. So mm -hmm. definitely Isaac gave me that edge. And it also gave me the, the idea actually and the inspiration to start your own startup because when you see the culture, the culture there was amazing, right? Everyone wanted to help each other. Everyone wanted to, you were working basically for free or for a very small amount of money. 
uh, for experience. We, yeah, exactly. But we all did that because we wanted to learn. Um, so I would say Isaac was definitely the reason why I decided to do this. Uh, I felt I, I just don't want to go the normal way that everyone does after graduating. And it's an insanely competitive advantage now that you're um, the, the general manager of, of Talabat, right? Like, and you're hiring, right? And you're hiring like key people that will help your, uh, your team go even wider. Uh, hiring someone with this international experience, I think it's very powerful also, right? And, and I'm sure that it's one of the key things that you might be looking for just for having this cultural awareness and like having this problem solving, right? Because w- when you're abroad or when you're managing or when you're an ISEC, right? You have these leadership skills uh, and that's be, uh, also a positive thing when hiring, correct? Is that something that you look for in, in your talent? The, the, the diversity part? Mm-hmm. It's interesting. Actually, I was just having this uh, conversation with uh, with our head of people this morning. Really? <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, obviously, in Egypt, it's not as easy because most people yes. are just Egyptian that were raised in the, in the same place. Uh, so we were discussing how can we push for more diversity and we're actually uh, considering hiring someone who's not Egyptian on the team. So I would say in my values, I think it's very important. It's not as easy to execute here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but definitely we have that in the headquarters in Dubai where it's much easier to attract people uh, from all around. But we do have diversity in terms of age, in terms of gender. Actually, something I'm super proud of is in, so in Egypt overall, the percentage of women in, the, in leadership uh, uh, roles in companies is around 5%. Actually, oh, only wow. 6% of companies have women under leadership. Versus in Talabat, our leadership uh, 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 team has 33% oh, wow. for three, uh, it's women, a little more, it's... Yeah, which is actually the global average, by the way. Wow. That's, that's amazing. And I guess having someone like you leaving the company also is, is very inspiring for other women, right? Uh, in Egypt and around the world, like seeing uh, someone like you in such a role. So thanks for that also for inspiring so many women around the world. I know that uh, all of the people listening to this, I'm sure that they feel the same way. Um, but yes, yeah, like I have so many questions P- the, of the team. People that collected, uh, they told me like, please don't forget to ask this. Uh, so I'm just gonna like look at my notes. Uh, are second. people going to ask on the on the chat or? Yes, you... feel free. Like feel free also to ask on the chat if you have any questions for Hadid. Um, it will be our pleasure answering them. Um, okay, I love this one. So imagine. Right now, of course, Educately, like we support students to find opportunities around the world. Like we have 30,000 bachelor's, master's, PhDs, literally everything, right? So like many of our followers and many of the people, our students are, let's say, about to graduate or recent graduates. Um, They're about to enter the workforce or about to enter university. If you were to talk to 17-year-old Hadid or even like 22-year-old Hadid graduating, about to enter a workforce, like what kind of advice would you give to yourself? Yeah, um, I think if I go back in time, it would be to learn more, not necessarily education. I mean, of course, I know you guys work in the education field, uh, but I mean, it's just there are so much information in the world. And sometimes I get to know something when I'm 30 and I think, oh, my God, if I knew that when I was 25, it would have saved me so much effort and would have made so many things so much better. Um, so I think if I go back, I would definitely learn more whether it's through education or through experiential learning or through having more mentors and not just one mentor, actually, but I would even have more than one mentor, one in leadership, one in strategy, one in financial management. I don't know. Uh, And I'm trying to do that now. Uh, I hope I'm not too late. I mean, you're never too late, obviously, to learn, but uh, definitely would be learning because a lot of times you feel like, oh, okay, I know what I'm doing, but believe me, you don't know what you're doing. (laughs) Even (laughs) when you're 50, you'll probably know not know what you're doing because there's always much more to learn. Of course. Yeah. And how, what would be the first step in order? Because yeah, learning is such an important thing and maybe we all know it, even the mentorship part, right? But like, if someone is watching this, like what's the first step in order to achieving or finding this person that can guide you through, through your career or through your learnings and, and growth? I think it's mainly through understanding what am I lacking, right? So what are the things that I don't know about? So for example, in my example, I've never worked in a corporate before in my life. I started already by doing my own startup and then from a startup to another startup. I should have realized earlier that I lack the corporate experience. And even though maybe I didn't feel it's that exciting, but there has to be something to learn. Mm. Those are companies that have been there for hundreds of years. Uh, There must be something to learn. So in that case, I would have picked someone from the corporate world to be my mentor, for example. So I think it's first understanding what are you lacking and then accordingly having someone to guide you on it. And it doesn't mean that he has to be your mentor forever. 
it can even just be for one hour. But what he mm -hmm. will tell you in one hour is something that he has learned or she has learned in five years or 10 years. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And something that I, I also like been learning from you and from other people around me is that, and we talked about this uh, yesterday in, on, on our life, that the people that surround you, right, the people, are the people that you spend every single day. These should be people that inspire you also and like to keep pushing. And I know that you are very lucky to have the circle that you have. Um, every day, even when you go back home, you have someone that inspires you next to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have to say this because I see he's here. So you know very well. I, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I have to give a little shout out here. No, but honestly, that the importance of having people around you that inspire you every day, right? Um, to uh, keep honestly, it, it's very important. Um, I was doing another interview yesterday, and they were asking, uh, like, what are some of the things that help you succeed or to keep going. And I think uh, support um, is extremely important from family and from the teams yes. that you're working with. So I was very lucky to have my parents, my husband, who, whom you know very well and is watching us now. Um, so to have this kind of support, it's, it's everything because work is very stressful. And at the end of the day, you go back home and you're probably very stressed. Uh, and it's nice to have this kind of support for sure. Yes, I love that. I absolutely love that. I think I saw a question here. I don't want to. I love our team is, is loving this conversation. <laughs> so if you Sorry. have any questions, just put it down here. I, I think someone was asking. Ah, there you about... go. There's a, yeah. I, th I think someone yes, was how asking. How can you evaluate the... what you're really lacking? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, how do you know what you're actually lacking? Yeah. Actually, it's a really, really good question <laughs> because, uh, you, you know, this concept of, uh, um, so sometimes you don't know what you don't know, right? Yes. So, for example, if we live in a world where there are no cars at all, I wouldn't know that there's something called cars. And then the next level is, you know what you don't know. So I know that there is something called a, a car. I know there is something called that I can drive a car, but I have no idea how to do it. Yeah. Um, and then there is what they call, uh, uh, I know what I know. So I know how to drive at that point in time. I'm very like careful. The first few days I'm learning how to drive. I, I'm very conscious that um, uh, of, of every single move that I'm doing to, 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 to drive. And then the next level, I think they call it uh, like the unconscious knowledge or something like that. So basically when you've been driving for years, then you just take the car and you drive and you don't think about it, right? Like not every time you drive, you think, oh, okay, I, I need to do this. I need to press that. Yeah. So those are kind of the four levels of, of knowledge. I'm probably not using the, the exact uh, keywords, but I think you guys get No one knows in this chat anyway. Uh, so it's, yeah, but, but, it's but, better but, if you're like that, yeah. Yeah, but, but answering the question, the first part is the trickiest part, right? Is when you don't know what you don't know. Yani, I didn't know there is something called a media training to talk to the media. I thought, oh, yeah, I'm a good speaker. I know how to give presentations. If the media wants to talk to me, I'll just go and talk to them. <laughs> and then I realized when I was in Karim, that uh, you don't do that. As a, as a GM or MD of a company, you need to be media trained. But how could I know, I know that? So what, the advice for this, for the person that was asking, is you actually need to expose yourself to as many people, as many conversations as possible to find that out. So if you're attending conferences, if you're reading books, if you're reading articles online, if you're speaking to different people, you will eventually know those things that you don't know. And then you will know what are the things that you're lacking, and then you can work on it and go through the process. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's that's great advice, and yes, com completely relate with this. I also like just join a more leadership position in in Educately, and and it was just having this conversation with people that it really inspired me, and I understood. Oh, I I really don't know about this area. Like I thought I had like some basic understanding, but I I am down here when I'm meant to be, right? So. And it's an amazing experience. Instead of being like, oh, no, I, I don't know this. Like, let me lie about it. I don't know. Like, it's such a cool experience thing, knowing that you get to learn a whole new thing, right? You, you get to develop yourself even more. Um, yeah, so it's such an exciting thing, um, at least for, for my perspective. Just that, that general awareness of, like, keep learning and keep growing. And I think that's the mentality of an entrepreneur also. I, yes, anyways, that we all, for sure, in this chat have. Um, <laughs> Yes, I, I wanted to ask you something I completely forgot now. So if anyone else has any little questions about this, about this point, it would be awesome. I love the comments, guys. Thank you so much for yes. the comments. <laughs> Thank Very you nice. so much. <laughs> yes. 
Any general advice for women or for people out there that are looking to grow in their role in, in their work right now? We should never stop learning. Never stop never growing. Stop learning. <laughs> yes, yes. That's the best advice. And any book that you've read lately that, or a while ago that really inspired you and you would like to recommend on this leadership or growth aspect? Um, I'm putting you on the spot here. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll recommend the, I mean, to recommend the book, I think this is a very big uh, question because <laughs> it depends what, uh, uh, what is the need the person is having yes. at that. But I think um, one of the books I read, and I'm not saying do that exactly, but I'll explain now the purpose. I read the four hour working week, and I'm not saying you should work uh, for four hours. <laughs> do that. It was so interesting because um, it basically helps you understand how to prioritize your time. And that you don't need to just spend a lot of time working to feel good about yourself, but it kind of explains how you should prioritize, delegate to make sure that you're using your time in the best way possible. Someone is asking, am I at the Talabat office now? Yes, I am. Are you here? <laughs> <laughs> you're behind me? <laughs> I see that Farida, uh, someone in our team also asked an, a question. Any advice for girls uh, on their first leadership position wanting to grow? Do you get that? I'm gonna repeat it. Sorry? Um, if I, someone from our team like asked this question, an advice for girls in their first leadership position wanting to grow? Um, be confident. I mean, there's a thin line, of course, between being confident and being overconfident. So make sure you're not that person. Uh, but I think just be confident and don't think about the fact that you're a girl. I think eventually we should just normalize being a female and not put so much pressure on that. Whether you're a female or a male, you just need to be confident. Of course, listen to your team as well, but that would be the main advice. Um, I, actually, I was attending a female cor course a few years back, um, and it was so interesting. Uh, we actually had this exercise um, where the, uh, the lady was telling us, guys, whenever someone tells you a compliment, females, we usually uh, shy away from the compliment. Yeah? So if someone tells you, oh, Elsa, you look uh, gorgeous today, you'd be like, ah, no, blah, blah, blah. or like, be super shy <laughs> about it, or they tell you that's a nice bat. Like, mm -hmm. So the exercise was when someone tells you a compliment, just reply back by saying thank you. You don't need to say, ah, oh, no, you're the gorgeous person, or oh, no, this, just say thank you and take the compliment. And uh, the whole thing was about females needing to be more confident. If you want to go and discuss your salary and negotiate it, just go. Females do that much less than men, okay? I'm not telling you, Elsa, to negotiate your salary. Then, <laughs> I want to go to your husband after Your this. team will kill you. <laughs> but in general, females really do that much less than men do. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely believe that. I completely believe that. Yes. God, yes. There's a very interesting question also here that for sure many people are interested in. I think we touched it very fast. But, Javier, what was your first job? right after graduation, fresh, freshly graduated, what did you do? Yeah, the first thing was, uh, was an ISIC. Uh, so I got thrown by the ISIC peeps in Lebanon. There was no ISIC in Lebanon. And uh, they just told me, okay, please travel there and start ISIC there. So it was like an entrepreneurial <laughs> experience, but in a country where I knew no one and I had no money. They gave me $2,000 and said, you manage your way. Uh, so that the first thousand was spent on just renting an apartment. <laughs> so so I had to do something to make money there. So, uh, yeah, that was the first uh, thing. That's an inter amazing international first job that I, I feel like many people would learn a lot from that. Uh, yes. And someone yeah. else asking Please. on the same topic of how to deal with self-doubt doubt in work, especially after going through a tough period. You will always have uh, self-doubt, my friend. It There's doesn't go away. Be, right? <laughs> That's something that I realized. I was like, oh, if I'm in this position now, I'm not, there's always going to be self-doubt, right? Even in your position, you can, you can say this. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's very weird if you don't have uh, doubt sometimes. And I think that's what, at least for me, that's what pushes me every day. So whenever I have a, whenever I question, oh, am I doing the right thing? Am I do, not doing enough or not? I feel like it drives me to even work more. So if it's 6 p.m. and I question myself, okay, maybe I'll work one more hour just to make sure that I, that I did my best, or if I'm questioning a certain decision, then uh, which is very normal, then I call my boss to take his opinion, or I call someone on my team to take his opinion, or I even ask my husband for his opinion. So 
I mean, it's normal. No human uh-huh. being is perfect anyways. Yes, yes, yes. And I think these, these self, and, and I think that also that's the first stage of awareness of knowing that everyone has self-doubt also helped me a lot with my own self-doubt. I don't know if that can be a, a tip right there, but knowing that, hey, everyone is the same situation as you. Everyone feels the same, no matter if they're the CEO, the founder, or like, Intern, you know, right? it's, it's, it's very funny because when you're, when you're younger, you don't think that, yeah? So when yes. I was in ISIC and I was just a member in a, a small university in Cairo, uh, I would think those guys in ISIC International, which is kind of like the global office of ISIC, they must be the smartest people in the world and they must be, you know, I don't know, robots. Like in my head, <laughs> they were like gods or robots or something. Uh, <laughs> and then a few, a few years later, I actually managed to join the ISIC International team and I mean, obviously they were incredible people, right? So very smart, very amazing, inspiring people, but they were human beings, you know, and, and I was one of them. So <laughs> it just means that, I mean, you know, you don't need to be brilliant uh, or a genius to be somewhere. And we all had our own self doubts and we all had our weaknesses that we needed to work on. And until today, that's the case. So, mm-hmm. yeah, yes. and, and that's, that's another thing that makes me feel that everything is possible, you know? That's amazing. I love that. And uh, yeah, in that point, like I remember when you're a kid, you always think like, oh, when I'm a senior in high school, I'm going to have everything figured out. And then you're like, no, when I'm 25, I'm going to have everything figured out. And then like at 30, I think that I should start having something figured out. Right? <laughs> like it, it's always, it's always, you see people like in the next days, the grass is always bringing in the other side. Right. Um, yeah, actually, and then you, know, you go someone, to the other uh, side and you're like, mm, this grass yeah, is not Someone was asking also. me, how, how do you know what you want to do? And I was telling them, guys, every phase is different. I, I, I actually spent almost a year every time between one role to, to another trying to find out what I want to do. It's not easy, but it happens eventually. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. I love this conversation. I wish we could keep going. And I would love to invite you again, Hadid, for more lives, for more podcasts. Um, because I feel like I can talk to you all day long <laughs> and the advice yeah, and, and we do right uh, more yes, on the we, do. Level we, <laughs> we do we can yes and I see like so many people are so interested in this topic maybe we can even go deeper on these um, self-doubt or like leadership positions and like how to grow in these aspects or even tips to how to grow if you guys have more advice Comment, I'm going to post this live as a post and comment or DM us directly what other topics you can discuss with Hadith so we can already book her in advance. So we yes, have her. <laughs> maybe when you're in Egypt next time. Yes, yes, yes. It's actually this month I'm going to Egypt. So uh, hopefully we can get to see each other before Ramadan starts. Thank you so much, Hadith. Any last thank words? You, thank you so much. And thank you for Educately for having me. Of course, it's always a pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining. And yes, anyways, if you want an international experience with Educately, you know that Educately.com has over 30,000 bachelors, masters, PhDs, literally everything that you need in over 20 countries and everything is for free in our platform. So (laughs) check it out. A little plug right there before leaving. (laughs) Thank you, Hadir. Awesome. Thank you guys for attending. Have a great day. (laughs) Bye, bye. Everyone have a good day. Bye.